To change your life, you don't need to take one big action like changing countries or careers. Instead, just focus on taking many small actions until they become daily habits. In the words of James Clear, success is the product of daily habits, not once-in-a-lifetime transformation. We tend to overestimate the importance of a major action and underestimate the impact of minor changes to our daily habits. Tiny changes, remarkable results. That's the core message of Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book is all about transforming your life through small changes to your daily habits. James Clear presents the science behind habit formation and offers practical strategies to help you build good habits and break bad ones. If you're looking to make lasting improvements to your life, then keep watching, because in this video I'm going to share a three-step framework to help you apply the concepts from Atomic habits to create a happier, healthier and more fulfilling life. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mary, I'm a doctor turned entrepreneur. In this channel, I talk about self-development in a very practical way to help you create a real change in your life. Make sure to subscribe for more content on creating a life you love. I hear you, I know you want to change your habits. You may have even tried changing your habits before and that may have proven to be more difficult than you initially thought. But trust me, once you understand how habits are formed and how to apply the right strategies to implement new habits to your life, the process is going to be so much easier. My goal with this video is to help you make a real change in your life. That's why I created two additional resources for you. First, an implementation guide, which will help you understand the strategies presented by James Clear in a very simple way. And I also have a habit tracker that you can use to keep yourself motivated and accountable to your habit change. If you want access to these resources, make sure to check out the description box, there is a link for you to get them for free. And the reason why habits are so important is because they make up 40 to 50% of all the actions we do on any given day. So your habits can compound for you or against you. If your habits are aligned with your goals, the more you perform them, the closer you're going to get to your goals. On the other hand, if your habits are disaligned with your goals, you're gonna end up further and further away from your goals. Because as James Clear says, time magnifies the margin between success and failure. Good habits make time your ally, bad habits make time your enemy. That's how small habits repeated over a long enough period of time will compound into remarkable results. James Clear demonstrates mathematically that by focusing on getting 1% better every single day, you will get 37 times better by the end of the year. On the other hand, if you get 1% worse every single day, you're going to get down to nearly zero by the end of a year. So when we don't see much of a difference from one day to another, we tend to get a little frustrated. But this shows us that on a long enough time scale, the differences are going to be huge. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a simple three-step process for you to achieve big results by breaking bad habits and building good ones. I'll share powerful habit change strategies that you can apply to stay consistent with your habits and to build a productive routine. Without further ado, let's get started. Step number one is setting your intentions. Basically, you need to figure out what habits you want to change, which habits do you want to build and which habits you want to break. For that, you can review the goals that you set for the year. If you haven't set any goals, have a think to yourself, what are the things you want to change in your life? If you find it challenging to set a goal for a long period of time, try setting a goal for a month or three months, for example. James Clear suggests that you do a habit scorecard, which basically is listing out every single habit you do on any given day and then giving it a score. 
So review each of the habits you wrote down, considering your goals. If the habit takes you closer to that goal, write a plus next to it. If that habit takes you further away from your goals, then write a minus next to it. And if it is neutral, you can write an equal sign. The goal of the habit scorecard is for us to be a bit more conscious about the habits that we do every single day. Now that you have completed your habit scorecard, it is going to be very clear to you what habits you need to break and what habits you need to build. But if you're still a little unsure or want to get more ideas, I suggest that you check out my 12 Habits for Life video next. Before we dive into how to make that habit change, we need to first understand how habits work. And James Clear presents a very helpful framework. He calls it the four laws of behavior change. He breaks down habits into four stages, cue, craving, response, and reward. The cue triggers the brain to start the behavior. It's like a signal that suggests that there is a reward to be gained. The craving is the motivation to act. It is the desire to achieve the reward. The response is the actual behavior. It is the habit itself. And the reward is the benefit or satisfaction that you get from doing that behavior. So based on these four stages, he presents a diagram to show us how we can build good habits and break bad ones. So basically, we want to make sure that our good habits are as obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying as possible. On the other hand, we want to make sure that our bad habits are as invisible, unattractive, hard, and unsatisfying as possible. To increase the likelihood that we will repeat a behavior, we want to make the reward seem as big as possible and the effort as low as possible. Now that we covered the foundation of habit change, let's talk about step number two, which is building good habits. Now we need to figure out which strategies would work best for us to build these good habits. For each of the four stages, James Clear presents several strategies, but I'm not gonna go into detail in this video. I'll share all the strategies there and also have examples to show you how you can implement those to your habit change. To make your good habits more obvious, you can add cues by designing your environment. If you want to drink more water, have a water bottle on your desk. If you want to read more, leave a book next to the couch or bed. If you want to go to bed on time, set an alarm to remind you to wind down. And this is my favorite one now. To make your habits more attractive, try combining them with something that you already enjoy doing. And James Clear gives us a formula here, which is basically, I will do what I need to do while I do what I want to do. And this is the single strategy I use the most. I plan my day while I drink my coffee. I clean up while listening to music. I cook while watching YouTube. I run while listening to a podcast. And I work out listening to book summaries on short form. By the way, short form is the best app for book summaries. That's the app that I use to read or listen to book summaries while I'm on the go. If you want to try short form, check out my link below for a free trial. I recently read the short form summary of Atomic Habits and I thought it was great. If you don't have the time to read the whole book, I definitely recommend that you check it out. To make your good habits easy, try using the two-minute rule. So basically, you reduce the habit to a two-minute version of it. Let's say you want to read more. Start with a goal of reading one page per day, let's say, or reading a couple of pages a couple of times a week, and you build up as you master this habit. James Clear suggests that if you want to master a habit, you need to focus on repetition, not perfection. First, focus on establishing your habits, and then you can improve on them. If you want to start running, start with walking first, then you can add one or two minutes of run. And once you master the habit of showing up, you can focus on getting better. To make a habit more satisfying, use a habit tracker. And the habit tracker is one of my favorite strategies because it not only motivates you to complete the habit, but also keeps you accountable to building the habit. 
And there's nothing more satisfying than seeing the physical evidence that you actually are working on your habits. So if there's only one thing you take from this video, it is to start using a habit tracker. If you want to get my 30-day habit tracker for free, make sure to check out my link in the description below. Finally, step number three is breaking bad habits. To make bad habits invisible, remove the cues. If you want to eat less processed foods, stop buying processed foods. If you want to use your phone less, give it in another room. And this is the strategy that I use to completely stop eating processed foods. I just stopped buying them. If there's no processed foods at home, I probably won't eat any. To make bad habits unattractive, reframe your mindset. I use this strategy to stop buying things I don't need. And by buying things I don't need, I will create more clutter in my life and I will save less money. To make a bad habit hard, add friction. You can do this by adding extra steps for you to do the habit. And this is a strategy that I use to control my phone use. I usually leave it in another room when I'm working or at least out of reach. And that is a very simple way for adding extra steps for me to be able to use my phone. Another strategy that I love here is commitment device. So I have this app on my phone that blocks distracting apps during certain times of the day. So I get to choose which apps I want to block and the time that I want it to be blocked. I also have a Chrome extension that I use on my laptop to make sure that I don't waste too much time on distracting websites. And this is absolutely great because it is a one-time decision that you make that you're going to reap the benefits of for a long time. To make a bad habit unsatisfying, you can use an accountability partner. This is quite simple, you get someone like a friend or a coach to hold you accountable for your actions. You can share with them your goals and the habit you want to avoid. It is going to be a lot less satisfying to engage with that bad habit knowing you're going to have to report to that person later. You probably noticed that all these strategies are super simple, yet they are very powerful. And for the different habits you want to build and break, you may use a combination of these strategies to set yourself up for success. If you want to get a quick summary of all the strategies in the book and examples for how you can implement them to change your habits and transform your life, definitely make sure to get my implementation guide in the description below. I want to end this video with a very powerful insight from Atomic Habits. Our lives right now are a reflection of the habits that we did in the past. In the words of James Clear, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits, your net worth is a lagging measure of your financial habits, your weight is a lagging measure of your eating habits, your knowledge is a lagging measure of your learning habits. Your clutter is a lagging measure of your cleaning habits. You get what you repeat. People tend to think that the things that they have or don't have in their lives is the problem, that not having enough money is a problem, that having too much weight is the problem, or that having a messy home is a problem. However, those are symptoms of the problem. The root cause of those problems are actually the habits, the financial, the eating, and the cleaning habits. And we've seen this time and time again. People win the lottery, or they get surgery, or they move into a new place, Given enough time, they will end up in the same situation because the problem wasn't the results they were getting, the real problem was the habits that they had. What James Clear says is that every action you take is a vote that you cast for the type of person you are becoming. Every time you decide to go to the gym, you're casting a vote for becoming a fitter person. Every time you decide to cook a healthy meal, you are becoming a healthier person. And every time you decide to plan your day, you are becoming a more organized person. So the key to achieving all of our goals is in mastering these small decisions, making small decisions that are aligned with our goals, and building the habits that support that identity. The more you act according to the type of person you want to become, the more you become that person 
person. That is the feedback loop of self-improvement. Everything is difficult before it becomes easy. So at first, changing your actions, changing your habits is going to feel more difficult. But as you keep showing up and building that, it is going to become second nature to you. The more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. See each repetition as an opportunity to build that identity, to build in your reps. If you want to reinforce your identity as a disciplined person who's focusing on themselves and prioritizing their goals, definitely make sure to check out my Atomic Habits Implementation Guide in the link below. If you want to change your life in the next 90 days, make sure to check out this video next. I hope to see you there! Bye!